What's up, YouTube? And I welcome to another edition of Letters from the Long Box, where Mikey Sutton from GeekosityMag.com and myself answer your viewer mailbag questions that you leave on the Letters of the Long Box page as a video, as well as in the Geekosity Facebook page. So let's get right to it, boys and girls. I hope you guys are having a great week. Uh, this will probably drop on uh, Sundays or Saturdays now. We're on a semi normal schedule but let's get right to your viewer mailbags all right so that's our first question is from general pudis well anything that sony puts out with marvel be part well anything that sony puts out with marvel be a part of the mcu i know venom and morbius seem like they will be but what about future projects like spider woman silk craven etc mike's response is Silk and Spider-Woman are strong possibilities that he scooped in both Gigosti Mag and on Lords of the Longbox recently. As for the rest of the discussions, and will continue. He will do his best to keep us informed. Thank you for that question, General. Neighbor to the North, 1982, asks, Hey, I'd love, hey there, I'd love to see content on some Boom and Dark Horse future projects. Does Mikey have any info on indie titles like Once in Future and Something is Killing the Children and etc.? Mikey says, I'm afraid that's out of my area exp expertise, but thank you for asking. Um, in talking with our friends uh, on Cover Price, and, and you know, they do a lot of research on books that get um, developed by Hollywood, there are literally two three dozen projects that are picked up by hollywood that are combo properties that never ever get made that's why we always tell you it's a dangerous spec to dealing with indie comics because it doesn't cost a lot for them to option these um these comic book properties and typically they do it so nobody else will buy them so uh, one studio might just sit on it and they, before they decide what to do with it and it just go away uh, less at least i remind you of descender god country uh the last minotaur it goes on and on and on so just be careful when you spec on indie comics when dc and marvel say they're going to do things they have the financial backers and studio to actually make it happen so some of these smaller properties just be careful sometimes it comes fruition but i will say now that netflix and amazon and hulu and all these streaming servers are available there are more avenues for these independent comics to come out from boom dark horse idw etc all right, thank you for the question. Next is from Benjamin Cross. Hey, TiVo, thanks for all the content you put out every week. You're welcome. My question is, do you know if a live-action Spider-Verse movie will split up into separate parts or if everything is going to happen in one movie? I have concerns if Sony tries to do too much in one movie like they did in Spider-Man 3, it may ruin the movie and do an injustice, an injustice to Tobey Maguire's character. The only talks I've heard of are for a single film that's coming from Mikey Sutton. So if there is a crossover between Andrew Garfield, Tom Holland, uh, and Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, it's only going to be a one-time thing, kind of a uh, an homage to them to see them off into a sunset, but they're not going to be doing recurring roles. Tobey Maguire is a little long in the tooth, so is Andrew Garfield. So, But I'm sure they would love to come back, but there's only room for one Spider-Man. That's Tom Holland for now. Um, thanks for the question. Planet Arizona Comics says, Hey, Tebow, love the channel. Thank you. Thanks for all your hard work. The team of LOTLB and Mikey Sun are the scoopers I trust. We really appreciate that, Planet Arizona Comics. My, his question is, Does Disney and Warner Brothers have any contingency plans for the big budget Marvel and DC films, Black Widow, Eternals, Wonder Woman, etc.? Should COVID keep movie theaters from opening up fully, or will they just keep, it, keep pushing releases back? Um, Mikey's response is they will stretch it back as far as they can, but with Mulan doing reportedly well, it may convince Disney to drop one of their unmovable block, unmovable blockbusters on there. So I don't know if you read the report. There was a, a third party, uh, consulting or accounting firm that tallied up the uh, Mulan VOD box office, uh, VOD meaning, um, uh, on demand, meaning the purchases on Disney plus. And it did $261 million so far. And that's just for Disney Plus subscribers. So I don't you know. Obviously, that's still a lot of money that it left on the table being it being a $200 million movie. But in the age of COVID, $261 is a whole, better than nothing, right? So uh, we shall see. But hopefully, hopefully things get back to normal soon. Um, I mean, my theaters in Orange County are open, L.A., Theaters may be opening as soon as October if they follow two weeks of downward trend of positive cases. So we shall see. But it's interesting how there is an avenue 
where they can be released now. Think about if this, uh, un the god awful, if this thing had happened three, four years ago, where could have they put any of these projects? There was no HBO Max, there was no Disney Plus. Netflix was what was Netflix basically what it is. There was no Apple TV, all these different areas where you're getting content now during shutdown. So if there was any way Hollywood were to switch over now, there is a means to it. But with digital releases, unfortunately, it rears the ugly head of piracy. And I think that's one of the main issues why they don't want to. Um, that's why also movie. Uh, I guess studios' relationship with theaters are very, very uh, strenuous right now because if they release a VOD, movie theaters will go out of business because they need exist. They need each other to exist. I mean, although movie theaters make most of their money on concession stands, I think they get it's like a fifty or sixty forty split between the studios and the movie theater as far as the ticket revenues. Our next question comes from our friend uh, Red Lodge Crow, Mikey Sutton, or Tim. Well, Doom have a sorceress at his side. <laughs> Mikey's response is not that I'm aware of. That is deep, deep into the comics. Um, Eddie Gomes asks, any truth about Harry Styles joining the MCU? Hmm. Mikey's response is, there has been interest in him at Marvel Studios, but I'm finding the Star Fox casting difficult to believe. That's going to the rumor that Harry Styles is going to be playing Eros or Star Fox in the MCU. If you read Dan Slott's She-Hulk run, you'll see that Star Fox's past activities in the comics seen in a contemporary light in a contemporary light as a serial rapist <laughs> or serial rape. Uh, in this post, hashtag Me Too World, I just don't see Disney doing this even they even though they change his character for the films. Uh, yeah, the ver Star Fox is a very um, kind of handsy pervy character uh he's kind of the uh, akin to that i guess saying the god of love his name is eros e-r-e-r-o-s um and then you know the main thing is people just assume he's coming and a version of him could be coming who's closer to being thanos's brother as opposed to being the character star fox uh it would be interesting to see how the obviously not all characters can be adapted directly from the comics to the big screen if they are they're tweaked a little bit to change for sometimes their gender swap sometimes the age is swapped same times their their the ethnicity is swapped so i would never say never but you know sometimes you do have to change it for whatever the times are because remember comics have been around for 80 years and the world is a whole different place in 2000 oh my god to totally weird place of 2020 where we are and speaking of where we are, we are at the end of this video. Really appreciate you guys for hanging out with Lords and Longbox, Mikey Sutton, and GeekOstinyMag.com. And uh, this has been Letters of the Longbox. Until next time, boys and girls, keep digging in them long boxes. Peace out.